All right, so we have a little bit of information about this function, but not much, and then we want to show that's differentiable at zero. Um, so the way we start this is for all h, what can we say? We want to we want to use this inequality in some way, and so here's a way we can use it. If we take f of h minus f of zero over h, then here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this just so that I can see it a little bigger. So I'm going to write this f of h minus f of 0. You divide by the norm of h. Then we can use a triangle inequality in the numerator. And so we're going should, to, I should switch to, um, though it's a little harder to see, I'll make this easier to work with. OK. So it's going to be less than or equal to this thing. Um, because you just use the triangle inequality in the numerator. Um, but now we can use that inequality that we have from the problem statement. So, well, first of all, this is, of course, going to be equal to, we can break up the fraction in 2, f0 over h here. And now this is going to be less than or equal to, now we, now we use the uh, inequality from the problem statement, so we get h squared over h plus the norm of 0 squared over h. And what is this? Well, the first thing becomes just the norm of h. Um, this is assuming that h is not the 0 vector. So we end up with the first thing, you cancel an h and you, get an, you cancel h from the numerator and denominator and are left over with h. And the second term is 0 because you've got 0 squared in the numerator. All right, so the limit as h goes to 0 of f of h minus f of 0 over h. So this inequality holds for every single h not equal to 0. So it holds if you take the limit as h goes to 0. So we get this thing, but this is equal to 0. Okay, so now that we know that um, this limit exists, and this limit is sort of, um, the stuff on the inside gives us what the derivative should be. So if you put an extra thing in inside here and make it look like um, what the actual full definition of the derivative existing, or, or to show that's differentiable at zero, you need that extra term on the inside of the numerator here. And then you need this, the resulting limit to be equal to zero. Well, this is already equal to zero. So if we just add zero to the numerator, then we still have zero. So from here, you can sort of gather that the derivative of this function at zero is supposed to be zero. So if we let lambda h be 0 for all h, then lambda is obviously linear. And the limit as h goes to the 0 vector of f of h minus f of 0 minus lambda h over the norm of h, well, this part just drops out, and what you're left with, we know that that limit is zero, so this is zero. Thus, um, f is differentiable at zero. And in particular, um, f prime at zero is the function given by lambda h equals 0. So th this is one of those where you sort of have to, um, part of the problem is actually, um, it, it's sort of weird how, weird how this is stated, because there's a lot of times where, in these types of problems, you'll prove that something is differentiable, but you won't have any idea what the derivative is. 
In this particular example, you have enough information to prove what the derivative is, and in fact, you need that bit of information in order to complete the proof. Um, so this exercise would have been easier if they would have said, show that f is differentiable at zero and the derivative is the zero function, uh, the, the linear function which is constantly zero. Um, but we weren't given that information, but uh, luckily given, the, uh, given everything that we had, we were able to recover that. Um, so yeah, that's all we need for this exercise.